This video will show how to compute the average energy of a molecule given the partition function and some structural data. So as has been frequently the case in the statistical mechanics chapter, the last video showing the average energy for a molecule from its partition function was very abstract. So let's do a concrete example and see what it ends up meaning in practice for us. All right, so let's say we have the carbon monoxide molecule. So that's uh, the C12O16 isotope of that molecule. Um, the rotational constant of that molecule is 1.9225 wave numbers. The vibrational constant is 2169.8 wave numbers. The dissociation energy is 1084.92 kilojoules per mole. And let's just assume that we have one mole of this particular uh, sample of CO. So in effect, what I'm calculating here is the molar energy uh, in, in every case. If I just take all these values and turn them into kilojoules per mole, that'll be, end up being the molar energy. All right, so starting with translations, the energy of translation from the previous video was 3 halves NKT, which is equal to 3 halves NRT. So N number of particles times Boltzmann constant NK equals number of moles times gas constant NR. So as I said, that R equals Avogadro's number times Boltzmann constant, which is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. So at 20 Celsius, which is 293.15 Kelvin, we have 3 halves times 1 mole times 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin times 293.15 Kelvin. That gives us a translational energy of 3.6561 kilojoules per mole, since I'm doing it for one mole in this case. All right, notice that that's directly proportional to temperature. Pretty much no, no tricks there, pretty straightforward. All right, to get the rotational energy, I'm going to calculate my, uh, actually, let's see what my rotational temperature is, just to make sure this is a valid approximation. All right, the rotational temperature is HC B bar over K, B bar over 0 0.69503 wave numbers per Kelvin. HC over K gives us uh, 1 over 0 0.69503, or the Boltzmann constant in wave numbers is 0 0.695 wave numbers per Kelvin. So 1.9225 wave numbers over 0 0.69503 wave numbers per Kelvin gives us a rotational temperature for this molecule of 2.76 Kelvin. So is our temperature much, much greater than 2.7 Kelvin? Yes, we're at about we're at about 100 theta rote here. So this is a valid approximation. Our, our energy for our rotations is going to be accurate. So if, it, if our temperature is below about 30 Kelvin in this case, that's when I'd start to get nervous about the accuracy of this energy. All right, so for a for a linear molecule, or a diatomic molecule in this case, the rotational energy is NKT, or NRT. If I substitute that in as I did up here with a 1 instead of a 3 halves, I get 2.4374 kilojoules per 1 mole in this case. All right, moving on to the vibrational energy. The vibrational temperature, HC nu bar over K, is equal to 2169.8 wave numbers over 0 0.69503 wave numbers per Kelvin. So the vibrational temperature is 3122 Kelvin. So my vibrational energy from the previous video is going to be nk theta vib times 1 half plus 1 over e to the theta vib over t minus 1. All right, so what does this end up being? So we have the 1 half nk theta vib, so we have that part, but what is this 1 over e to the theta vib over t minus 1 part going to be? So to do that, let's take a look over here where I've got some values. So the temperature in units of theta vib, I've got the vibrational energy divided by nk theta vib, I've got the, and the derivative of the vibrational energy with respect to t divided by nk theta v. All right, so at zero Kelvin, this term is zero, and I just have one half nk theta, so I have one half. At 0.1 theta vib, I have 0 0.5004, and there's almost no change with respect to temperature. 
At point two, I have point five oh six eight. At point five, I start getting some contribution. I get point six five six five nk theta. At temperature at t equals theta v, I get one point oh eight two oh. So I have a significant amount of vibrational energy there by the time I'm at uh, theta v, and then it goes up there, and it approaches a linear increase as you increase temperature. So the so the derivative with respect to temperature of the vibrational energy when you're much, much bigger than theta v is going to be nk theta. But at very low temperatures, it's basically zero. So at high temperatures, your vibrational energy is basically going to be uh, nk theta v uh, times t there. Or sorry, it's going to approach t. But at high at low temperatures, you get basically no contribution there besides the one half, which is called the zero point vibrational energy. So at this particular temperature, we're at about 0.1 uh, theta v. So e to the 3122 over 293.15 minus 1 over 1 is going to be 2.371 times 10 to the minus fifth. So our vibrational energy is basically all one half nk theta, which is 12.979 kilojoules per this one mole. The electronic energy is just minus n times the dissociation energy. So for one mole, that's minus 1084.92 kilojoules. The total energy is a sum of all these contributions. And the molar energy is the total energy divided by the number of moles. So my molar energy of CO2 at 298.15, or sorry, 293.15 Kelvin is going to be negative 1065.85 kilojoules per mole. So let's notice that this is about 20 kilojoules per mole above my electronic ground state. So where does that come from? That comes from uh, some contribution of my vibrational energy mostly from the part of vibrational energy that is even there at zero Kelvin. And then I have my five halves NKT there, or five halves, uh, five halves R versus temperature, which is uh, almost equal contribution from translational and rotational components.